What are we going to be reviewing today? Hmm. Let me see. How about a Batman book? Because as we all know, we need another Batman book. We need lots of Batman books. <laughs> What's up everybody? It's Edwin back again for another comic book review. For my pick of the week is Batman Eternal, issue number one. So excited to review this book. Once I saw that we were going to get a new Batman book, I was really excited about it. Not only do we have Scott Snyder as our star writer, but we also have James Tinian IV and collaboration done by consulting writers Ray Fox, John Lehman, and Tim Seeley with art by Jason Faba. Okay, you guys, so Let's get right into it. I'm going to be reviewing this book in its entirety. And there are spoilers. If you don't like it, you need to not watch this video because I'm spoiling air thing. That's right, I said air thing. We actually open up with this book with Bruce Wayne chained to his own bat signal. Crazy. And not only that, but we're opening with the end. At least that's what we're led to believe. Not only is Bruce chained to his own bat signal, but he has the Batman symbol carved in his chest. So we're led to believe that somebody knows already everything that Batman is Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne is Batman. When you flip over the next page, we see we get an introduction into our a new character by the name of Jason Bard. Jason Bard was recruited by Commissioner Jim Gordon himself to be the new lieutenant on the night shift here in Gotham City. So he seems to be kind of like a protege. Commissioner Gordon is actually supposed to be there to meet with Jason at his arrival on the subway, but Commissioner Gordon was actually kind of busy at the moment. He was tied up doing something else, and then we're taken immediately after this in introduction into Jason into Commissioner Gordon and where he is at the present. And where he is is he's actually in the middle of a gunfight with Professor Pig. Batman, of course, shows up. He spoils Professor Pig's plans, and they take off running. Professor Pig takes off running with his accomplices, and and they're chasing them through a subway. Professor Pig and his accomplices have to, they end up splitting up throughout the subway. Batman and Jim Gordon are chasing them at the same time. Batman splits off Professor Pig's way and Commissioner Gordon splits off to an accomplice, which we really don't know the name of at the moment. We split off stories at the moment. Batman ends up catching up with Professor Pig and is actually really pissed with him because of what he's done with the with the children drugging them and getting them involved in this entire mess so he's not quick to show mercy or be nice or gentle or kind to professor pig for involving young children he apprehends professor pig and then we go to jim gordon jim gordon is chasing this guy this guy is kind of getting ahead of him but he ends up getting him pinned kind of cornered a little bit while the chase is going on commissioner gordon is on the radio trying to get his people and his resources to stop all train movement in the subway tunnels. It doesn't end up happening. What ends up happening is that we actually, not only we do get movement from one subway train moving throughout the tunnels, but two, one coming from each direction. So you have this predicament of, of trains moving throughout the subway tunnels. Jim Gordon gets his guy cornered, kind of pinned down a little bit, and he sees that his suspect has a gun gun and he tells the suspect, he's like, look, put your gun away right now, otherwise I'm going to shoot you. The suspect is holding the gun, but at the same time, he's like, what are you talking about? I don't even, I'm not, I don't have a gun. I'm not holding anything. But we see within the panels that he is holding a gun. So there's some kind of mind game being done, being used during this event. So the, so, so Commissioner Gordon, after he counts to three, he fires like a shot, which I assume is supposed to be kind of like a warning shot, which ends up going through these utility boxes, voltage high voltage boxes behind the suspect and an explosion happens an explosion erupts right behind the suspect which blows him sky high and he's actually dead so he 
can't he can't be questioned. But Jim Gordon, he knows without a doubt and believes that that shot should not have caused this type of explosion. When the explosion happens, not only does it kill our suspect, it derails the train cars and the subway and kills a lot of people. But little is shown as far as actual facts and details of the events, of the actual real events of what's really going on behind what we see in the panels of the comic. Because of the magnitude of the death and the damage, the destruction that takes place from the train being derailed, Jim Gordon is actually found to be at fault for the destruction and the death toll that takes place in this comic book. They're led to believe that there's no choice but to arrest Jim Gordon for his actions and the causes of death and destruction in the subway. It's funny because even Batman tells him, tells Jim, the suspect didn't have a gun. So it's like he's targeted for whatever reason to take the fall and go down for these events at the expense of one stranger that we don't know who his name is or we know anything about. The artwork is okay. The artwork I felt like was a little bit above average. I'm glad to see a new Batman title. In my opinion, I would have to give Batman a rating of three and a half out of five and that's being slightly generous. So that's it you guys. Uh, that's my review of Batman Eternal issue number one. Please make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you keep God first in your life. Enjoy your comic books and God bless you guys. I'll see you next week. Peace.